-hmm. It is spicy. Mm -hmm. Have a bite. Very good. Mm. Super good. Okay. Hey Jordan, what are you eating? I'm eating a Into the Wild beef jerky, dragon's breath, breath flavored. Oh, cool. Ooh. Where'd you get that? Um, well, I'm not sure, Cameron. <laughs> I got it at Main Street Brewery, and my girlfriend picked it up. <laughs> That's a great way to let the world know that we got a sponsor for Into the Wild Beef Jerky. <laughs> and it's pretty good. Pick yourself up some. Where? To, where? Main Street Brewery. Main I Street bet. Brewery. That's pretty much where I know. Good luck. <laughs> well, pretty delicious, though. Okay, as I was saying, Eat Into the Wild is their handle on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm trying to, uh, I'm gonna also open up this Korean barbecue flavor, Cam. Mm. Let's see how this. Eat Into the Wild. This goes. Um, so as I was saying, Ate. Mm. Ate. Ate. Sorry, man, I thought it was Ate. A-N-T-E. A-N-T-E. I can not it um, How old is you, would you say he is? Like 17, 18, 19? I'd put him 20. 20? Yeah. He's like, he was maybe. at West Park. And Actually, no, he's been working in carpentry for six years. So, so maybe he's. Yeah, he's older than that. He's like 23. 24. He yeah. looks young, though. Yeah, 24. Ripping is, skater. 24 is a good guess. Great style. Mm -hmm. Ripping skater. And did, you, did he tell you he was going to be at West Park that day? or how did you... I had no idea. He came up to you? Yeah. And he asked He said to hello to me when I, when I walked in. And I said hello, thinking you're just being polite to people that you don't know at the skate park. Mm. Um, for full context, we did an episode with Mackenzie, and she's a life coach and a career coach. Mm. And Ante just found out about us. I'm not sure how he heard about us, but he hadn't met Jordan or me. I don't think we have any mutual friends. And he just really enjoyed the podcast. And then he reached out to Mackenzie to get like career advice. And then it turns out he wanted to work at New Line, so Mackenzie's like, just talk to Cam. Like, that's probably your best bet. So I've been mm. talking with him and just... Trying to give him like the next steps as to what he'd need to do to apply to get there, yeah. Anyways, I thought it was pretty cool that he said what's up to you. But he was at West. Yeah, he was at West. And he just and came he over and like, hey. like we'd already been emailing and just came over and said hello. Mm -hmm. He also emailed, emailed me afterwards and said that we were ripping. Oh it was nice to meet us. Oh he was ripping too. He's awesome, man. That kid <laughs> rules. You should have that kid on. Let's have him on. That guy's yeah. awesome. But anyways, it's nice to Ante, nice to meet you, and like you're a lovely person, and fuck man, that was cool. We were like, we were really hyped that like you came up to us and s said hello because that's yeah. no one. You're the first person I think ever, really. It's also cool to have like little milestones with the podcast because we always talked about like here, like I saw Mackenzie trying to do this, and I've been really supportive of that idea to be a life coach and just like change careers for her because she seemed like she was really passionate about this. And then we always say, like, well, who knows? Like, maybe we could help you out one day. And the fact that one person has finally reached out that wasn't a friend of ours, you know, like that mm. actually got to someone mm. and they got help from her, which was sick. Through the podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. like, the first cool. milestone, I think, yeah. or one of, like, first time for that. Yeah. Which is huge. Yeah. Sick. And uh, this is our second podcast this week. We're on a fucking tear. We're trying to go hard, like, as of late because we kind of went soft after the holidays we went soft for the holidays you know we were we were doing our thing and that's okay and now here we are and we got and, a sponsor and we got a sponsor so Deep jerky. um it's really good it's local and yeah i we're trying to do an intro we're trying to do an intro right now we're trying to do an intro but we're fucking god terrible at intros usually I'm used to be good. Thinking that that was pretty good. You think that was all right? <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. <laughs> what did you think was wrong with it? I don't know. I just it wasn't the best. But I mean, like, I usually listen back and have a giggle at myself, and mm. I'm like, all right, that's kind of hilarious. Did you want another piece of cream? Uh, no, no. Would you like try anything else? I have the jerk. You have the jerk? Yeah. Oh, we got. Oh, it's, oh, it's jerky. No, I, I thought it was like the jerk. flavor. Yeah. So for flavors for the listeners yeah. and for Malcolm apparently. <laughs> We have Korean barbecue, mm. Dragon's Breath, mm. Wicked, no idea what it is, Outlaw, also pretty vague, <laughs> Campfire. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing there's liquid smoke in that one. <laughs> um, um, the meat is caribou beef, just FYI. Ooh, ooh. Sriracha, rice vinegar, and garlic is mm -hmm. in the Wicked. Mm. 
Dude, anyway, either way, this is delicious, and I could snack on this all day. You probably will. And I probably will. Yeah. She watched out for eating too much beef jerky. I eat a lot. My mom makes beef jerky, and I have a bad appetite when anything's in the fridge. And we were camping up north fishing, and I just I kept sneaking in the fridge to uh, eat the beef jerky. And I woke up, and I had pooped myself. Really? Really bad. You pooped yourself. I pooped myself. You didn't wake. You woke up mid poop, or you are already pooped. I like there was just no getting out of my sleeping bag, and mm-hmm. it was it already mm-hmm. happened. But yeah. it was just I'm just worried. You don't need too much. Crazy. Feature. So like, when you pooped, and you were covered in poop, was it like a like a lot of poop? It was a ton of poop. Really? Was, Good for you. Yeah. That's sweet. <laughs> I was recently just uh, telling uh, Izzy about uh, like aqua dumps and like how like I'll like well, submerging like, poos. Yeah, like water? yeah, like oh yeah. It started in the started uh, on a skate. Like we had like a couple of friends that started like a thing. We would like um, go from skate park to skate park around Alberta, camping and um, you know swimming and stuff like that. And we were always looking for places to poo. And yeah, then we started. To submersion poo, like uh, poo in water, and then that started submersion tour, and that went for almost ten years. Nine years, yeah. Nine years went for we'll have every, a ten. every summer. Um, we did it, and we did it in different parts of like BC and Alberta and Saskatchewan, Montana, all this kind of stuff. And um, but anyways, yeah. And I continue. I always poo in water. When we were in Dubai, every morning we like got up, we had some McDonald's for breakfast, had coffee, and we were on a beach that was in the middle of the city, and we just went for a swim and just pooped in the water and it was great it was every day i <laughs> love it i'll do it i would do it every time yeah if you get a river and it's yeah flowing, i mean if you're in a, it's, it's gone if you're in a body of water that's staying probably not you know that's if you can't tell we are on the downtown east side at we, sbc mm-hmm. we're in studio here mm-hmm. and someone's at the door we are on location where was the thing? door no no i don't think so i think that was more of just like a a commotion of stuff Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm going crazy. I thought I saw. Uh, no, no, that was a door. Oh, yeah, I don't think, but I just don't think it was a knock. No. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think it was for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It gets pretty crazy down here. We have Malcolm on the hot seat today. Yeah. Um, in his hot seat. Mm-hmm. And um, we delivered. We're in the middle of the skate ramp, and the scene is lit. There's beef jerky. There's weed. There's beer, and we're. We're about to start this thing, I guess. Okay, nice. That's where you'll cut it? Yeah. And then here's where I'll start it again. Wow. You know, see how that worked? Mm. I gotta stop eating beef jerky. It's too good. I'm gonna poop myself. Mm. Just for the record, for the listeners, it is four o'clock on the dot. I give it about eight minutes before Jordan needs beef jerky again. You think eight minutes? Well, now that I've told you, it's going to change it a little bit because you're no. I might, it might become though. like a. Eight that's what I'm hoping. De- on. It makes it a decent amount of time. And he just smoked weed too. Sometimes I like, I'll try to meditate and I set an eight minute timer because that's, I like did eight minute meditation. I read a book, like eight minute meditation, like a long time ago. My mom recommended me. And uh, so for some reason, just naturally, I would choose eight minutes. I always am like, it feels like it's been 40 minutes. Like, <laughs> like six minutes in there, I always, like, I'm like, Jesus. It's a long like time. Forever. It's an eternity. <laughs> you must have sex forever. That was like an hour. <laughs> I have sex forever. My mom got me a book called Driven to Distraction, and I could never find myself reading it because I'm always so distracted. It was <laughs> ironic. <laughs> Super <laughs> ironic. It was, yeah. about, like, it was about a book about like trying to deal with ADD, but like, it just... Couldn't fucking do it. I feel like that should just automatically come out as an audiobook. Mm. Like, Tell me about the it. market that you're catering to. You want them to read it, or or listen. Yeah, or listening is easier because like you can do it as you do other things. You can mm. juggle Mul- listening, mu- multitask. Yeah, is, whereas like, reading right. like the book is for people that have a hard time paying attention. I still yeah. have the book, but like, yeah. do a TED talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> One time you should read it, but maybe not. <laughs> it might be too far gone, dude. Did you ever read? Did you read some books? Um, no. No, I mean I read like documents. Yeah, I can. Yeah, of course you read like but for I sure. Cho- yeah. I choose I articles. Mm, sometimes, yeah, interviews. I like re- I like reviews. Yeah, I like reading reviews. Yeah, reviews are cool. Yeah, for places sure. for some reason. <laughs> I have no other reason why. Get your reading in. But no, not title. I like the outsiders. 
from like grade eight, Hell like yeah. Essie Hinton. And then there's one like I think it was not a self help book, but it's father writing to his son. Mm. I think it was Ken Newburn. Um, but it's just like an advice book from father to son. Nice. That's and I read dope. it when I was like fifteen. Oh fuck I, yeah! I still kind of. You still like it? I think so. I love when books like resonate like that, or like something like that resonates, and you like always hold on to it. That was yeah. That's the only one that's mm-hmm. ever really stuck out. That's cool. Know, audiobooks has always been something for me for sure. For sure, yeah, definitely. It's more uh, you can get it done while you're doing other stuff, yeah. yeah, which is kind of important. But reading is also kind of one of those things that's like kind of it's meditative, and it feels like nice to slow down and like read a book instead of like turning on the TV. You know what I mean? No, yeah. Not for you? Yeah. Huh? Well, no, 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 no TV. Like I don't have cable. Yeah. Netflix. I don't have any of that shit. Yeah. Nice. That's sick. VHS. Though. VHS. Yeah, you'll rock a VHS, which is so sick. But that's about it. How yeah. deep's your collection? Yeah, you got a pretty big. Yeah, it's, I'm gonna go through it. I'm gonna do a little purge in February nice. here, but like I don't know, probably not a ton, like over a hundred. But it's all like choice ones. Yeah. You know. Do you you go back and watch though multiple times? Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Like, Those I'm are the type of movies that you would go back and watch. Multiple and I fall times, asleep right? too, like the, the soundtracks. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. I'm upset, sometimes I watch a little Goodwill Hunting. Yo, Goodwill Hunting, yeah. is amazing <laughs> dude, amazing. Yeah, no, it's it's when I'm on VHS too. Oh yeah. Oh nice. Yeah, yeah. sweet. Good Robin Williams, man, motherfucker is awesome. Mm-hmm. Matt Damon, Matt one Damon. of the best movies. <laughs> Real <laughs> that movie rules. Mm-hmm. Movie rolls. I never. I have a couple VHS. No, I gave all my VHS away. Actually, I gave my VHS uh, skate videos away to Dustin Locke. Some of them, a four and one, two four and ones, and then I gave him. I don't know. I Did like posted. Yeah, oh well, yeah, Mikey took the podcast. Yeah, you brought yeah, it to yeah. that. Oh yeah, right. Dude, I listened to that. Yeah, nice. he had a couple of them. Yeah, he had a couple. I gave a couple to a couple different people, and I still have a couple. I forget what I did, what I have, but. There's like videos though that I do keep. Like there is like um, like the GX1000 that first DVD. I'll always keep that. That one's too good. It's like the those guys are gnarly. Right? Those guys are gnarly, and that video is like so good. And um, Jack has a laptop that plays DVDs still, so I always watch that. Ancient. It's ancient. Yeah, that's sweet. Well, you can always buy one. You can always buy VHS. And... Oh yeah. Well, eBay. Yeah. I've been, I've been eBay. collecting. Like certain ones, the ones hard to find is Rad. I don't know if you guys remember that movie was filmed in. Rad is a skate video, or not a skate, a sk- about skateboarding. No, or... no, no, it's BMX. BMX, okay. It's yeah. like 1980s BMX movie. I'm not sure. Hard to find. Hard to find. Hard to find. I've got the vinyl. But Do you like go to places like Black Dog or like. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Even like eBay, that, like it's yeah. on eBay for like 90 bucks. I was mm-hmm. going to say, prices mm-hmm. start going up for VHS. It's like, I can't, you know what I mean? You got to find it. Yeah, like rural sure. somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Someone just waiting, like, 40 years, like, I fucking told you. I fucking told you someone's going to pay 100 bucks for this. <laughs> Your mom's like, I get it. You won. Yeah. <laughs> you kept the DVDs. Or you kept the VHSs. Like, yeah, that's true. You kept your VHSs, and you made yeah. me carry someone them around paid 80 for bucks. so long. When you moved out, you didn't take them, and you yeah. left them with me. <laughs> I kept them because I love you. So A lot of that cool. shit holds value. Pokemon cards have value now. Dylan sold magic cards from like 20 years ago and he made I forget what it was but it was like 900 bucks or a thousand bucks just for the cards that he had from like when he was a kid playing that's crazy yeah that's weird that is so fucking weird I don't understand the game so I can't comment mm. maybe I love you know like oh yeah I love Pokemon <laughs> cards when they came out but it was like seriously like it was like a year of loving it and then I was like it's kind of, kind of one of those things you're like meh next whatever yeah yeah next like they're great but like, and did you ever play yeah, we played. We played at a school all the time. Like, I didn't even know how to play. Five, six. Yeah. I had a huge collection, and I never knew how to play. All I just the kids. Liked... How old are you? I'm 30. Okay. Yeah. So that was like when I was... Six months ago? That was six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I remember... I just remember like the upper grades like at recess when Pokemons were, were like popular. That Pokemon cards were popular. We'd like all play together. and like, We'd all trade and shit and then play the game. Damn. We're geeks, but that literally was a phase. I swear to God, for everybody, well, maybe not some people. Some like people. Pogs. Yeah, Pogs were. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Have, yeah. Love Pogs. Oh. Yeah. My dad made me like a Pog container, and I thought it was so genius as a kid. He just took a toilet paper roll and duct taped the bottom, and I just stacked my Pogs in there like a loony roll. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was shit. great, and That's I just great. like, yeah, I was like, oh, I need one of those things. He's like, 
I can make you one in about four seconds. <laughs> it worked. That's so sick. Your dad's cool, man. Your I like cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's an OG guy. What about your dad? He's cool. Yeah, my dad's awesome. Yeah. No complaints there. He's he's a bit of a strange cat, but yeah. he's for sure everybody is. Aren't we all? Yeah. 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 Well, like like I was gonna say, you guys are nerds. I think everybody's a fucking. Nerd. Oh, for mm-hmm. sure. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, definitely. Like, yeah. I ain't trying to be cool. I'm not like trying. No. You know what I mean? Like metalheads, yeah. fucking nerds. Yeah. But it's just like you yeah, know. they just like <laughs> skateboarders though are kind of nerds too. Like they're <laughs> yeah. always like they get so like worked up over like you call it a backside bo- or you call it a backside lean tail. You get called out by six people. They're like, it's a fucking body jar, dude. It's a fucking body jar. And you're like, dude, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I, I, it's a, I did the trick where I. You know, do the thing, and that's how it works. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. There's also like Brian Comparelli's of the world, where you can ask Brian like any video part. Like, what song is that? What oh, year? Like, he'll know the year. Know. He'll know the tricks in it. He'll know the song. Like he, geeks, yeah. Mm. Like skate nerd, hundred yeah. percent. And now nerds are cool. Like nerds are popular, way more so than when we were in high school. Well, because they're nicer. <laughs> they, don't get yeah. anything, they don't get anything to fucking prove. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? They're like, trying to be them. Maybe people As recognize the value that they bring. To, like. Your life is so easy and you have all these apps because someone made it. Like, I didn't fucking make it. You didn't fucking make it. You didn't make it. Like, these dudes are making it for us and these girls are making it for us. And we got to thank them. Yeah. Like, they're making the world pretty rad in a lot of ways. Go geeks. Yeah. <laughs> Go geeks. What do you geek out over? What's your geek? Mm. You like metal, but you're not, like a, you're not like a crazy metal geek. You like hip hop, though, too, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah uh, I like, I don't know, man. Hip hop, food sometimes. Yeah, you know, like not sure. food business, sometimes. Business, like just yeah. trying to trying to hustle. And like, yeah, you do like keep, hustle. Yeah. Like keep, keep it afloat. Keep this place afloat. Is, yeah, is the main concern and something that I wouldn't consider that geeking out. It's more survival, but geeking out on survival kind of helps, you know. But like for a passion, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you say you geek out over skating in a way too. Like mm-hmm. other other skating. people's like I haven't yeah. really skated in a while right now. Like I'm kind of yeah. just cr- I'm off my board for a bit. Not yeah. even by choice. Just you know, just it's you know to me I will, I'll never turn a passion into a business again. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have put myself in this position. Yeah. Which I love. Yeah. But I love it on a different on in a different sense for other people. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I still love to skate. I love to watch it. I love to be a part of it. But am I hucking myself downstairs? No. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. I'll ride the ramp a bit, but it's, you know, I need, I need like, Jeff Cole around. Yeah. I love when you fucking toss on the pads and you have a dome and you need to fucking give her. I love that. You it's know. so sick. I'm cruising to that shit, too. But, Go on. Yeah. We'll get back yeah. at her. Yeah. You know. Frick, man. We talked about survival, and I get that with, like, trying to make foosball worthwhile for the time invested and this like i don't pay rent i give a percentage whereas you have you need a fixed income what's the closest you've been to closing the doors i'm sure it's been battles. it's yeah it's, it's it gets close all the time you know what i mean like it's i ride a fine line mm-hmm. of between um of <laughs> running a family business at the same time as serving alcohol and so just just juggling all those sort of different hats of being like oh this is a family orientated orientated fun like because kids be. can come here and skate, skate, and, 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 skate. And, and learn how to skate and like you've hosted skate lessons and that kind of thing but then also turn come nighttime Come Friday nights, it's also like a music venue. The music and venue like, yeah, and parties. And parties and like, yeah. You know, which is, so juggling that. Also, also, also like you, you sell know. beer, like when it comes nighttime, it's like Wednesday night, a guy comes in, he's like my age, 30, has a beer when he skates. Like that's it, you know what I mean? You have alcohol around, but there's also a kid, maybe a kid that's 14 that's skating that same night, you know? Oh yeah, like a little Gussie, thing. who's yeah. awesome. I yeah. love watching that kid rip. Yeah. But it's also, you know, the neighborhood too is. Exactly. Downtown is where is not wearing like I love it, but What's the it's, address for the listeners. Uh, one one hundred ninety Hastings. Yeah, Columbia and Hastings, pretty much. Yeah, we talk about SBC Smiling Buddha Cabaret, and uh, Malcolm has run and owned for how many years now? How how long has it been open? We started two thousand twelve. We started building. My business partner and I, Andrew. 
Um, and it took us a year and a half to get to opening the doors at the same time as we were writing a business plan to apply for loans. Like we had started building the ramp and we didn't like have, like we were, all of us were working. Mm -hmm. We had free rent at the time to be, because the building was- Condemned? No, it wasn't condemned. The building was gnarly. Yeah. Need a lot of work. Yeah. And we, you know, a lot of, lot of help from the skateboard community, but it was also hush hush. Yeah. I didn't know about it, man. I, I moved here in 2012 and I was literally skating Lee side every single day. And then all of a sudden, like the next year, I was like, I was like, oh, you heard about this place in SBC? You should go check it out. I heard that at Lee side. Mm -hmm. Someone told me. And then I was like, oh, shit. 2013 is when we opened. Yeah. Up. Yeah, that was afterwards. Yeah. yeah. I, that's when I, I came here. And I was like, I remember coming here once, one winter. And then the next winter, I was like, I'm going to SBC every day. Like, I loved it so much. PD was a big part of just from Skull Skates. Yeah. Kind of just being like, he got mad at me once because I was just. You know, young. I hadn't really run any sort of business other than like selling drugs as a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is still entrepreneurial. I mean, frick, man, you're a business. Like you said, you nerd out over business shit. It's business, you know? <laughs> uh, but I was just excited. We had this business plan kind of rolling. So we had like drawings and stuff, and I was skating Lee side, and I'd showed some dude because we were kind of still looking for helpers, but it was hush hush. So it was wasn't the easiest thing to be. Cause you gotta keep, if you're gonna build a ramp, you gotta keep it down yeah. until it's, until it's done. Yeah. And, um, I got a call from Petey cause I guess the dude that I talked to went, was in the shop being like, I heard there's an indoor opening. And then I got a call and he's just like, you fucking blowing it, man. I'm going to fucking pull out. Like I was so upset cause at the time, you know, I knew Petey, but like we weren't friends like we are now. Yeah. And you know, he was a big part in like just having his consultation on things. You know what I mean? He's been in business fucking 30, 40 years. Like, well, nice time. to have, nice guy to have on, on your side, like when just you're just even, starting, even, you know? even just yeah. bounce ideas, mentorship, yeah, kind of thing, bounce yeah. ideas yeah. off of. He's you know, he's his own man in his own way of business as well, but yeah. he's DIY, yeah, which is which is cool, which is what we were doing, which is super cool, you know. Um, but yeah, it's been now, it's been I think we've been five years open, it's been the seven year that makes I don't, I don't know, I think it's been seven years of ideas and building and then like we didn't have a business license for the first fucking almost year or six months or something and then they were just like the health came in there like you guys can't serve food with a business license but we were cooking chili had curry chickpeas mm -hmm. had a slash and dash where people could come and skate get a grilled cheese and chili to go for like people in gas town like we were trying to build some sort of thing and then had our legs cut from under us, kind of right from the get go. Yeah, you know what I mean. But it is what it is. Like, there's so we've always kind of viewed it as like so many little streams to make a river. Yeah, you know what I mean. So we do. We were doing art shows or kids programming, skating, so any any little music, thing that, music yeah. anything that we could create to. You want to you want somehow to income the flow like yeah that kind of thing and a community and the community yeah. which is and you know, one of those could take off. You know like say you do a night that's like an art night or whatever the night may be karaoke one could just click within a community you can't predict what people are going to want all the mm -hmm. time. and some could just catch on and then you're not going to know unless to try like you always have to be trying oh to yeah make, always trying new things like we're doing tattoo tuesdays Shit. you know and which was which was fun you know did it make some money tattoo tuesdays i don't know uh, it was, it was more, less about making my more but getting people in the doors mm -hmm. you know the tattoo, and like our, yeah. bu our buddy would need need to do some work yeah. so it was just like was trying to help him out at the That's same cool, time yeah. help our, ourselves out and yeah. not even help ourselves but just stay alive and survive yeah you know? me you managed to do that till now so that's pretty impressive yeah we're still here yeah it's daily struggle but you know it's I, I, I don't know what i'd be doing otherwise that's cool and dude you know, it's like, your own thing so it's like it's like it's less of a job and more like your life oh yeah it's, mean, like, a, it's, it's like, a lifestyle yeah, yeah, it's a lifestyle exactly. you know like i don't have to answer to anybody in the sense where if i don't want to work with you i won't yeah or if you can it's choose not, if it's yeah. not something i support you know if it's you know we, we had a michael graves show that got booked here and i was made aware michael graves is like the second singer of the misfits oh yeah okay and i was made aware of some of his political views not that i want to talk about politics or anything 
but it was stuff that I definitely don't you don't agree, agree with. I yeah. don't agree with. And yeah. Even though that show could have been two, three hundred people. You're not I, selling I, out to I, that. You're like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not for the money. I'd rather not. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was, it was. I won't. I won't give him his platform. You were like, yo, ramps open for open skate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it was, would have been a packed show, and I heard he didn't speak any of his stuff, but it was just very, very not. My, you know, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I wouldn't even call myself left, but like I'm very open-minded. Yeah. When yeah. you know some of the things that you were saying is very not. You've also experienced like some like your lifestyle, like you know what I mean. You've experienced things that maybe some of these people haven't, so that's why you're so open and like mm. and yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and my mother you and know, your mom. My yeah, mom. Yeah. I was very fortunate and lucky to have a caring, loving mother that's yeah. You know, super open-minded. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Raised, you know, I feel like she raised me with good morals, and yeah. she still does, still gives me shit, and still calls me. And I think she's raised you with good morals. You're a very nice human. A lot of people would say that to you. A lot of people would, would like say that, like, you're one of the most realist humans that, like, that they know. So, your mom definitely did a good job. She's a shit. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm. That's cool. And you're still here, so that's great. Yeah. And we're open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for skating, and then yeah. Friday, Saturday for shows. But yeah. this week, there's no show on Friday, so. You're gonna go but open, yeah. I posted it mainly because it's just me. It's Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, and it works though that way. What's People the, are on Instagram and Facebook. What's the account? Uh, S, at SBC Restaurant. Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Serve a bit of food. It's mainly pizza pockets and pizzas. Yeah. Maybe one day we'll get into the wild beef jerky up in here. Oh, mm -hmm. fucking right. We there should do go. that, man. Get some beef jerky. Sell that shit. Grazables. That was one of the things in the business plan to have. Grazables. Grazables. Dude. Yeah, because, man. Because, like, skaters, they don't want to sit and have a meal. They want yeah. to be able to, like, eat and go back on the ramp. Yeah. And they don't, it can't be too heavy, so it's yeah. cool. You could put that in your pocket and be eating on the ramp. Oh, fuck, man. You could put this right up on this ramp and shit. just get right in there. Okay, I just, I just opened another one. It's called Outlaw. This one, is it? this one has Canadian beef, oh, soy sauce, Worcestershire, liquid smoke. I'm 10 minutes late. Brown, sugar, <laughs> garlic, black pepper, salt, paprika. Took him 18 minutes, not eight. 18 minutes is pretty good for my last one. Does anyone want to try it? Yeah. No. <laughs> good call, though. I would have forgot to. Yeah. Nice. There you go. I'm fucking... No can't call me out. <laughs> my ass. I'm just going to call you out. On the... I'm done with beef jerky. Um... Oh, I'm not done with beef jerky, dude. Into the wild. It's I guess blowing, it's blowing my mind. I guess we can like rewind and listen to exactly what you said because I think you did say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. We'll hold you accountable. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. I guess we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Whatever. Hmm. Mm. Okay. So let me ask you this: You're born in Victoria? London, Ontario. London, Ontario. London, Ontario. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. But your mom lives in Victoria? No, no. I live. I moved to Victoria when I was twenty. I see. Okay, so I was wondering why you have ties to Victoria because you're like you're always having six side events and like that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. moved to uh, Victoria. I'm gonna finish eating this beef jerky. Mm -hmm. mm. It was just fucking good beef jerky. It's also really hard to talk with a mouthful of beef jerky. <laughs> yeah, not the best thing to be eating on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta try it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I moved to Victoria when I was 20 and lived there for five years. And that's where I got connected with the six side dudes. Mm. In the early days of the build, and those guys are awesome. They kind of taught me, which kind of bled into this place, like blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. And you give her, you give her. It's just something, you get. and it was like the first kind of crew that I felt like it was like, oh, you know, like when I was skating back home when I was younger, it was like me, and then you know I, there wasn't really a ton. Of dudes to skate with. Like, I didn't have a really crew growing up. It wasn't like, yeah, you didn't have a big group. And then in Victoria, there. met some dudes who were from Port Stanley, which is not far from London. And then the, the guys from Six Side Brando and Stinky Mark. Nice. But yeah, so started fundraising from with those guys throwing shows at halls and getting beer donated. Well, we'd buy every keg of beer we bought. Uh, Phillips Brewery, thanks again, would uh, always match the kegs so if I bought two kegs we get four damn so it was and then you know we'd find other people to donate prizes to raffles there was a concrete company that donated like four meters of concrete and then we got a pumping truck and pumped it down there damn do you just rent the pump truck 
I think it was donated as well. Whoa, damn, dude! So, so that's how it started. And then, what was it when it first started? Like, what what was what was built? Like the wall? No, the wall was just under a bridge. It was kind of like any skate spot where it's and like under a bridge. Yeah, you know, people yeah. are gonna be sleeping there, having fires. Yeah, kids are gonna be lighting shit off. It yeah. was kind of kind of like that. It's like Lee Side, man. People love Lee Side. People mm-hmm. that aren't don't skate love Lee Side. They're mm-hmm. like old school. Well, yeah. tunnels and like under bridges, it's yeah. such a fucking fun place They're as, dope. as yeah. a kid to yeah. be. Totally. Let's go to the tunnel. Fuck yeah, dude. We're doing it. <laughs> it's like climbing trees. You know, nowadays, like, you don't, like, I don't know, you live in the city. Don't say, I, don't I, say I, don't because we, I climb like, a tree every fucking week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy climbs a canby tree. Like, I, yeah, yeah, I love yeah. the canby tree. Oh, yeah. The, the tree. Yeah, the top uh, can be in like Royal Oak or King Oak Ridge? Ed. King Ed. Yeah, yeah 28th. 28th or 27th. Mm-hmm. Do you want to give it away? Campfire. <laughs> this one's <laughs> called Campfire. But no, I'll I'll climb a fucking tree. Well, good. Any chance given. All right, all right. I'm a climber. Climber. Yeah. We even brought it up before we even turned on. Dude, I'll, he's, climb, he's, I'll climb buildings. He's all. a monkey man. Mm. I climbed some gnarly buildings. He freaking one time like uh, I don't know the exact story because I wasn't there, but like it was snowy and he had to jump up a really tall. It was fucked. Yeah. So he had to jump. About, yeah. Like, anyways, you can tell the story. I was there. I don't know. I don't know. It's gnarly. Gnarly stuff. So, we've talked about Ryan Fight Brown a lot on the podcast and how crazy he is. This was the first time I've ever tried to do something where Ryan was just like, that's retarded. That's stupid. Do not do it. Let's go. Yeah. There was a building. It's right by Pub... Uh, 340. 340. Mm-hmm. And like by Camby or Victory, Victory Square. There. Directly yeah. across from Pub 340. It's directly in the alley yeah. across from Pub 340 mm-hmm. though. Oh, yeah. And like the there bike. is a fire escape yep. that is locked. And it's about, I want to say, a story and a half. Yep, I know what. And there's a dumpster, so I jumped on the dumpster, and then I jumped. No, I was holding on the dumpster, and I had my foot. It's almost like a baseboard thickness, like not an inch. I guarantee it was not an inch mm, thick. Maybe just, like a. It was around the windowsill. Three just quarters of an inch, like seal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it's mm. also like beveled, it's rounded. Yeah, totally. So you don't really have too much of a get, yeah. like a push off. So I'm standing on the dumpster, and I have one foot on the dumpster, one foot on the bevel. The windowsill. We'll and I was gonna jump up and grab the fire, the fire escape that was hanging there, but I had to jump backwards. So yeah, I because the fire escape back. was a little bit further back. Yeah, it was probably like mm. two to three feet like out of the building where I was like flush against the building. Mm. And Ryan's like, I don't even want to watch this. He walked away and he was just like angry. And then I was also a little intoxicated, which gave me a little bit more courage probably. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I just shifted the weight from on top of the dumpster to on the windowsill, and I just like jumped off, jumped out, and caught it, and it was, I was so thankful when I grabbed it, and then I just pulled myself up, hopped over, I took the rock off of the weight for the fire escape, opened the ladder up for everyone, and it was He was, was also, a hero. It, it was, was a goddamn snowing. hero. It was, it was snowing. snowing. Yeah, that's the crazy part. It was fucking snowing. And then we and went you're, up. You're five foot, like two? Yeah, maybe like five, six. Oh, six. Yeah. <laughs> You're I'm tall. Two? <laughs> I'm, I'm a small guy. Yeah, yeah, small yeah guy, but he's like got. Ju- he's, he's, he's pretty agile. jumpy for a small agile. guy. Agile. He's pretty yeah, jumpy. Sure, yeah. He can get some height on those legs. But you know? I, he's, he can get over things on a skateboard. But jumping backwards, and it's like I'm thinking about that round corner, and it's wet. You know, it's yeah, I, it's risky, dude. Risky. That's risky. I went, I went back the next day, and I was like, whew, that was dumb. Like <laughs> I probably should. I hope someone walks by and looks at it. Yeah, it like, I shouldn't do it again. Damn. But we all got up to the roof. And then there's like it was epic up there. A too, railing right? yeah. on the roof too, and then Lane Couplet and I were standing on the railing in the slush, and Ryan just grabbed our collars and pulled us off. He's like, "You're fucking stupid." He's like, "You're up here. You made it. You don't need to go up there. Like, just use the hand railing." Like, For crying out loud! And then That's Lane Ryan. crawled around the building on like a vent duck, slippery as hell. Honestly, like slush everywhere. You know, in Vancouver when it snows, but it just. Kind of melts when it hits the ground, but kind well, of doesn't. It's still wet. Yeah. It's metal. Like, slippery, it's slippery everywhere. Yeah. And it's kind of on like a little bit of an angle, too. Like, yeah. I sound like a red lamp light just turned to blue. Mm-hmm. Caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that was... Crazy, though. Crazy I'll night. I'll climb. Yeah, yeah I like yeah, He likes to climb. He does. He's a yeah. little monkey man. I just, I just called him that before the podcast started. <laughs> talking about the tree before yeah. the podcast. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to go with? Open a new package, dude. Open I want package. the smoked. I want the smoked one. Campfire. Mm. Did I open it? He oh, did open it. it. Yeah. Going to pee and grab my flag. <laughs> okay, well, I have a question for you. So, if you, so this is seven years now, right? In the making? Seven year project, like f- five years open. Yep. But 
I count the first two years as important or more important. Than oh, the rest. oh yeah. Equally important. Yeah, fuck. If you could go back seven years, what would you change in the process? Mm, what would change? I don't know if I'd change anything, really. Like, maybe, because it wouldn't be here. Uh, one thing, but you won't, like, working with friends is something, like, I, I constantly ha learn, you know what I mean? That it's, it's tough to work with friends. Not the best idea. I was even hesitant to do this with Jordan, because there's so much friendship there that I'd hate to risk it on something stupid. On something. But, but like, fingers crossed. And just learn, just, hmm, I don't know if I'd change anything, but like maybe, like my mind's open to all different things. What would I change? Fuck, throw me on the stat. I wish I knew that question. I don't know. Well, it's good that you don't have an immediate one, though. Yeah, no, like nothing. nothing like, like, I just, like, to me, I live pretty day to day. But I'm also a creature of habit. So, like, once I get, like, the ball rolling, it's kind of, you know, I book bands and I'm here during the week. It's it's pretty easy to do. Ne but now, like before, it was a lot more. You have to build. It was habit. a lot more of a struggle. Like, wh what are we doing? You know, we sat here for three summers trying to get people in the door before we decided, like, holy fuck, there's no reason to be open in the summer, unless it's a private party or bands on the weekends. Yeah. Like an event, someone comes for a birthday. That makes a lot of sense. But, but yeah, people like are skating. For the ramp, there's no, like, you know, it, it's so fucking beautiful in this city. And, and it's, it's fucking sunny till like 11 p.m. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like there's no, like, I was doing like 8 till late. And even still, like, it's for 110 bucks. You know what I mean? It's, you can't pay someone to be here. I don't really have any employees. And for me to sit here for 100 bucks, I mean, I will. But mm -hmm. now we've kind of made it work to the point where it's just like, fuck, man. Two days a week in the summertime is enough for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And What do you do with that time now? Mm. Fuck. What did I do? This, this summer I took some time off. Drove down to Utah, which was awesome. That's so dope, though. You need that, man. You worked your fucking ass off for like you've been working your ass off forever man like yeah it was it was good like i got a truck for the first time and drove it down to utah and blew it up and flew home <laughs> it was it was a fun little trip like gro drove down the oregon oregon coast never done that before so and i was weird. trying to just get some time behind the wheel because i'd like to get my full license so it's just had the time off and was just like fuck it let's my friend peter and i drove down and great person to travel with because we're both just chill nothing bothered you know what I mean yeah. everything that happened like you're just going with it we were just yeah. like yeah, flow well, that's, yeah. that, that's alright I guess you know we're here uh, let you, go. Yeah. you know it was a thousand dollar truck a little Sonoma mm. how'd you blow it up oh uh, fuck man well I don't think the, the fuel pump was working it was showing that there was or not fuel the oil showing there was oil and then I think we ran it dry and we were the people in America drive very fast do they we were going in especially the, Utah it was fucking insane. 80 like, miles an hour is the speed limit, I think. 80 yes. miles is what in kilometers? One, one forty. Holy fuck! And insane. yeah, and we were going. I like my foot was to the metal, like pedal, pedal to the metal. We were going buck forty for a long time, and then she just fucking blew up. And we were on the side of the road, and, and beautiful day. For the, like, I just got CAA, and it clicked in that day. Nice, was, dude. That's money. Which was key. Yeah. We we're on the side of the road, and then we just. Brought up, brought up the lawn chairs and opened the cooler and sat in the sun for six hours waiting. That's so nice. They're just like, well, fuck. I mean, yeah, we just kind of had our feet up and enjoyed the sunshine. Nice. And did it get towed back to Van? Or? Uh, no, I got towed to my friend's house in Utah. Nice. And then I, would, I went to drive it to a, go to a garage, and it blew up again. Like it, it was, I killed it. You yeah, you I literally drove that one to the ground. And yeah. Well, just, yeah. You ain't got it to Utah. Mm, that was yeah. yeah. That's not too, bad, it was, worth, it was worth the trip, for sure. Not bad, yeah. I'm, well, the Cam Burroughs that has an Alberta license is not allowed in Utah. I got a ticket there a long time ago that I just didn't pay because I have no need to pay Utah. I have one in Montana, and I have one in Utah. Well, sort of tickets, like a speeding ticket? Speeding ticket. Well, so there's... Um, Montana was on submersion tour, and this is Jordan. I blame Jordan to this day, but I'll get over Probably, it. Probably, yeah. We were. We left the skate park 
and we weren't going to drive to the next city that had a skate park. We were going to pull over whenever their car got tired, and we're convoying on the submersion tour. And which car? Which car? Was I driving? You were driving one which, car, and I was driving car? behind you. Was I don't it know. the Grand Am? Was it Steve? Did Steve have a car there? Okay, I don't know, but I re- I slightly vaguely remember, but it's gonna so, I'm gonna be reminded. Jordan was very tired and very slow. I'm guessing he was baked, and I know that Steve was in the front seat and he just bought like four different penthouse letters and they were all reading the penthouse letters, <laughs> looking at porn, driving, and they're going like a speed, the speed limit was 70, and I think Jordan was going about 45, and I'm just sitting behind Jordan, creeping along, like focused and like. I don't know, just not distracted by porn. And then all of a sudden, Jordan realized how slow he was going and then just took off. So I floored it to catch up. All of a sudden, cops turn around. And like, I was actually going to pull the car in front of you over, but you were here speeding as well. And I was like, that's my friend. I'm waiting. Like, I'm just catching up to him because I don't even know where we're stopping. And we always just pull off on the side of the road and camp like in the bushes. So I'm not, I don't need, I don't have an address. You know, I don't know where I'm going in mm-hmm. Montana. And turns out that we were going through a construction zone. Although, in hindsight, knowing more about it, they actually had garbage bags over the signs, which they usually do mm-hmm. when it's no longer valid. Because mm-hmm. at night, they've already cleaned up. Mm. But he gave me a ticket as if I was going in a construction zone. And I was going more than double in a construction zone in Montana. And the ticket was like 110 US dollars. Did not take my car, did not take my license. Anywhere else, you would get caught up on the spot for double. Yeah. Like, yeah, but especially in a construction zone. This other time, I'm in Utah. I'm with my ex-girlfriend Heather, Jamie Redmond, and his wife Leah. We're driving, and this is an 80 mile an hour zone, and I'm going 86 in an 80. I get pulled over, and I get a $600 ticket for going six miles an hour over. $600? Yeah. $100 like, a mile? No chance I am paying that ticket. Yeah. yeah. And did you ever? No. And where was that? Utah. Oh, you could. That's what I'm saying. Well, well also, I've moved to BC, and now I have a BC license. So when I get pulled over in Utah, I'm not the same person. Different address. You're like, oh, different license. I don't know that guy's yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't met that Camberos. Might be a different Camberos. <laughs> same birthday. Maybe. But they also fucked up my address. They put a three instead of an E. Mm. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really not. I mean, that's not one that's it'll happen. Happen. That's not okay. one that's gonna come back to home. It'll be okay, you know. Yeah. I think you're gonna be fine. But yeah, Utah, you drive like maniacs. Yeah. Apparently they pull you over for going six over. It's crazy, they drive like maniacs, but maybe that's why. <coughs> I'm pretty sure it was in our lifetime that Montana implemented a speeding limit and a law that said you weren't allowed to drive with an open beer. Nice, dude, nice. Well, that water. guy's freaking beverage up. Yeah, he's not putting on the table. Yeah, that's, that's good. True. Yeah, that's true. He needs he needs water. Mm. Mm. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy that in our lifetime you could have no speed limit and drive with an open beer in the states. In the in the states, you yeah. could drive with an open beer in the states. Holy shit! Yeah, I just said that. Crazy. <laughs> My dad was telling me that it was in Montana. They just had that law passed when I was a kid. Damn. Well, you used to be able to smoke in bars in our lifetime too. Yeah. That was, and like in in restaurants and shit. Like Pizza Hut. Yeah, same with Boston Pizza. Like when I was a kid you could smoke in Boston Pizza. My parents owned it, so we used to definitely utilize that. Drink forties in the back and yeah. get that big New Yorker, which is my favorite pizza, and smoke cigarettes. That's cool. We weren't old enough to go to bar go to bars or nothing. Yeah. And pizza Hut had pizza and you could smoke cigarettes inside in the winter. That's sweet. And they, they even if you're underage they don't go fuck you're smoking cigarettes. That's dope. It used to be cool. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of things have changed. Yeah. I feel say. like they're just taking away freedoms slowly. Slowly. One at a time, yeah. but they add up. It's pulling straws. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like just a little by little. I think people, in judge, people judge too much on interpretations of what people say versus people's intentions. I think a lot of times people get lambasted online for like things that they say when they have good intentions, but they just get criticized. Mm-hmm. Like a comedian Rude. saying retarded like they don't actually they're not trying they're not an ableist you know I don't think they're making fun of someone with a handicap I think that they're just and there's also the definition of retarded which is holding you back from something like yeah. that could be the right well, term well that like we've you know I mean, we've used that word for years we as in like I think That's anyone right. our age for like sure like 30 yeah, 100% 34 yeah. you yeah. know and even and, and older you know what I mean it's kind, it's kind of not normalized but 
in, it's in our vocabulary. For sure. Kind of desensitized. Of, like, I work with handicapped people, yeah. and I still drop the art bomb. You know? But there's no, there's no ill intention there. And I think that's, that's oh, yeah, what I, I mean. Like, people should just recognize that you're just speaking. Like, there's not, just there's no ill intent at all. Yeah. But that's why I brought it up. So no things have changed. Either, there's yeah. no malice at all. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. Or for being, ah, you're being retarded. It's just like, you know, you're being dumb, you're being silly. Yeah, you're I being used silly, to say yeah. chicks are for fags all the time. I couldn't say that. I, I guess actually I just did used say, to but say like, that all the time too. Yeah. yeah like, well, even the, even even goof. You're being goofy. But nowadays, you, you, call, you call someone a goof. It's fighting words. For sure. You know? And people like they're bringing up. Before there was obviously like. Yeah, racist. sure. You're a, you're a goof, buddy. You're like. Oh well, yeah, but the, the, you know that stems from clown in jail. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's like used to be the big ones were like racist, sexist, and now there's ableist, like someone that can't use their legs. You can't make a joke about someone being healthy because then now someone that's not healthy could take offense to that. Mm -hmm. And they just keep going. Like, but the one thing people don't talk about is how classist we are. Like, I know people that judge people and hate on people for what they're saying, but they won't look a homeless person in the eye. Mm. Like, you can judge this person. Like, when does that line... Where does that line... Yeah, right? Where like, does that line? It's just going to keep going. I think eventually people are just going to recognize how ridiculous outrage culture is. Mm -hmm. Like, judge on intent. Back to what I said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, I just tried the Wicked. <laughs> fucking fantastic. <laughs> what's your, what's it's your favorite? so good. I think, uh, actually, I don't know. The Korean barbecue is really good, uh, but the Outlaw was my favorite. I Korean think. barbecue for me is too sweet. Mm. You're and sweet you love Korean food, so. Uh, connoisseur. Mm -hmm. Some would say. Like a connoisseur. No. Mm. It's good, though. Yeah. I liked it. Um... I had a question in my mind, and I totally, I totally forgot. It, but like, I'm trying to bring it back here. So much weed. Yeah, it's beef just jerky. It is. I'm drink, I mean, it's the beef jerky. Brain just like food. <laughs> mm -hmm. We were talking about being like classes, people that can judge homeless people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, things have changed from yeah. our childhood till now. Oh, oh, Chicks you were like, bags. oh, that stems from jail. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever been to jail? Me, no. Drunk no. tank. Drunk sure. tank, but never jail. Yeah. No. Yeah, I try, mm -hmm. I try and have a clean record. Mm -hmm. To own a business on the downtown east side, you are not allowed to have a criminal record. No, for sure. You have to really? Have, have is to it only in the downtown east side? Is it uh, like I have to go for a criminal record check to get the business license. Mm -hmm. Or we had to submit a criminal record report. Is that no just check? limited to here? Or is it all I, I think so. I've never, well, I've never had a business elsewhere, but I don't think mm -hmm. that... Anywhere, yeah. No, I'm, I wonder like what the boundary is. Like, it's where probably the, it's probably the hundred block. Wow, but I, I, I don't know. I'd have to look Crazy. that up and report back. Crazy, but well, yeah, that's cool. So Drug tank, pissing in public. You know, just little misdemeanors. I stuff. mean, everybody gets a ticket for peeing in public. <laughs> <laughs> when, sorry, when you pee in public a hundred days in a row, and um, well, to me, it saves water, and it's just it's just nice to be outside and, and like just be. Peeing outside, I don't know, it's nice. I try not to pee on like other people's businesses. Yeah, I for try sure. And make it, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A good spot to be. Definitely. But definitely. Like, if you, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go. Dogs piss outside every day. Yeah, it's true. And like, you know what? Vancouver's pretty rainy. It washes away. It does. Although, I guess like the other side of it, we don't need like a hundred people in sight at all times pissing outside. Mm. Like people are pissing outside. I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are pissing outside. Those alleys? I'm always pissing outside. I have to pee every 30 minutes. I hate when I'm peeing outside, and it's one of those, like, marathon pisses. And you're just sitting like, hey, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Up, you're in Gastown, but you're in the alley. You're, you had a dumpster. Yeah. And it's, like, Saturday afternoon on a sunny day, and there's you just see. families walking by. Yeah. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there mm. many times. Yesterday, I was at Ladner. And uh, I didn't want to go pee in the little stream beside it because it was really wet down there. So I just like casually like leaned up against the garbage can and just like totally like just chilled and chatted and peed while I chatted. Mm, nonchalant. The nonchalant. It actually worked so well. Like it was just looked at. I was like literally leaning on the garbage can, just being like, "Yo, so what's up? Mm. <laughs> Don't mind, mind my feet." I just, have a bad habit of peeing on my truck tires. Not even bad habit. I just if I gotta go, I pee on my tires. Yeah, for sure. That's your stuff. Yeah. You can piss on it. Yeah. My dog used to pee on, like, if he came to my mom's property, the dog would instantly pee on the tires. Yeah. 
I don't know where, how I picked it up from him. Guys. Yeah, you <laughs> love him. <laughs> Bendo, Bendo. Bendo. He's dead. Oh. I do that too. So does my dad. What, peel your tires? Yeah. Oh, sick. You just yeah. like open the door and piss on your tire, or do you not open your own? I could not have been in my vehicle all day, and if I was outside, I would just pick my tires and pee on. Mm. That's crazy. Or like, my dad put a urinal in the garage. He just like put a funnel in the hose, like oh. cut a little tiny hole in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> he just pees in the funnel. Like, and where did it go? Uh, have you been Sometimes. at my parents' house? I, I've been there, but I can't, I can vaguely remember. Up the driveway, there's like, right to the left, there's a fence mm. for our neighbors. And there's maybe two feet in between the garage and the fence. Like, you can barely fit through it. There's a tree there. It just goes into there. Nice. But then it, it's uphill, so I guess what I know now about gravity, it goes in our neighbor's yard. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So our games. Yeah. That's cool. Some more noise. That's my urinal. <laughs> Although James has used it. James is in the garage yeah, and yeah. also pissed out Pissing, of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's hilarious. I wonder if your dad washes that urinal or if he just leaves it. Definitely washes it. A little bleach. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bleach. Pour some bleach down there. Just into your neighbor's yard. No big deal. We're fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's cool. What was that noise that just happened? Um, it just... It's an old building. Yeah. It makes noises. I think it's building 1896. So, so dude, when you said when you said you like when it was rough, what was it like in here? Like when when you first like who what was in here beforehand, and what was it like in here? Well, was, back in the day, it was the Buddha. But right, that's right. Like Jimi Hendrix played here in Dance Joplin. It used to be a dine and dance kind of speakeasy where you'd bring your own alcohol. Lots of stories about it, all kind of not really documented. Bev Davies. Took a bunch of photos in here from the punk rock scene in Vancouver during the 70s. But other than that, there's, you know, not really much documentation of what was in here. I heard it was gnarly, but there's a lot of stories, like people, not even rumors, but people will come in here from the neighborhood and be like, oh, I remember, you know, and tell you a story, like bar room fights and dragging people out by the cops. And, mm. you know, the basement is dirt floors. You know, when we got in here, there's no power, no plumbing. Like, we pissed in the bucket for five months, and, oh, that was, I used to pee in cans, and then Andrew had the lot, he just, because it's so <laughs> cold in here, he ended up drinking my piss a couple times, and then that was the end of the piss cans, and we gra graduated to a bucket. Yeah, the bucket's essential, <laughs> and you're like, that's the piss bucket. It's also that's horrible when you pee into it again, and it stirs up the smell. It's well, it, so it, it, bad. It, it's gnarly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but there was no power, no plumbing. Like we, Stepan from Selfest, also from Skate Community, um, had one. did, yeah, you guys, yeah, he's, that was a great interview. Mm -hmm. He's he a fucking, he's hilarious, he's man. He's hilarious, dude. He's awesome. Um, he did, uh, like I met him at Chuck Bailey and told him what we were up to, which I probably shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> but at the same time, if you don't talk about what you're doing, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And like how you're supposed to get help but keep it hush hush like it's it's a fine line to mm -hmm. to to do or follow through or whatever the, it's a fine line to live there's a lot of people willing to help too if they, right but you got but you got to know who's like help and who's going to hinder for sure mm -hmm. like it, we had to stop drinking and while we were working cuz then people would just come and it'd be more turn more into a party than mm -hmm. then a work, work shift yeah and so we'd have to you know we drink after but Stip I met Stepan and told him about this and he ended up doing a fundraiser for us to buy another generator and that was you know seven six seven years ago and so we got another generator because ours died and we just lock it up to the back gate and work in here under lights and extension cords and you know it's cold probably yeah well, we, we slept in here for three years even after opening like one of us yeah. always, always stayed here yeah between Andrew and our why why was that just because you didn't want people coming in and shit like that yeah it was like we security and presence and also like when you live we live together and we work together you know there's you're working and living so close to one another you need space yeah and yeah. that's that's Major just time. you know fact of life or, or shit doesn't work mm -hmm. you know so, but like I, you know, we have a small apartment and it just gets tight. Mm -hmm. Here is like a 
big fucking living room. Mm-hmm, yeah, that's true. You know, and you can sleep in the ramp. And where do you usually sleep? Well, I, I sleep forever, man. Depending on who's with me, I guess. Yeah. Where they want to sleep, or if they want to sleep, you know, there's a good spot. I sleep behind the bar. I had this weird. I don't know if you've heard of. I don't know, is it succubus or incubus? It's like sleep paralysis. Like, cause there's I've heard about ghosts being in here, but it's when you wake up and like you you can't move and yeah. it's like something's on your chest. Oh yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Incubus okay. maybe. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but definitely had that happen once in here. And I told Andrew, he's just like, that's called um, whatever. It's terrifying. It yeah. Mm. There was a feeling like, can't of being I woke in. up and I couldn't I couldn't move. Like I couldn't. Like I was awake, but there was weight on paralyzed. my chest and paralyzed. Yeah. I've been there too. Like I. The girlfriend that I talked about that we were in Utah driving, I was at her house, and she's got the stereotypical father that was like, "Oh, do you want to come see my guns?" Like, took me to his gun room like the first day I came over, like, joking but still just like at the not joking, like, like <laughs> but seriously. And we yeah. were asleep. We actually weren't even doing anything. We were just upstairs or downstairs on the top bunk in like a spare room with the rifles. We were in the gun room, and we were just like cuddling asleep. And then I thought that they had come home. And I woke up in paralysis and I was trying to move and I was locked just trying to get out of that state and it's like absolutely terrifying and I had to like break through like my arm when I woke up my arm went flying in the air because I had to like, <laughs> ah! like, get, like get wake the fuck up you know like I, it was a lot a lot mm. to handle yeah it's an interesting feeling it's only happened it's only happened once that's crazy like I'm never I'm not really scared of ghosts or is there ghosts in here though uh you know I, I think so I mean I, I'm not like I, I like when I go down the st- like I feel like there's a presence. Like we go down in the basement. Like yeah, I was down in the basement with Joe Buffalo when we were doing the electrical for the stage, and it was weird down there. That's so weird. It, it My board's weird. falling down there, and I'm like, ooh. Yeah, I, it, go get I feel like the friendly ghosts, if anything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, there's, there's, there's just not, a presence. There's just yeah, there, a presence. It's, yeah. it's such an old building, and like, and, but it could be nothing. It could and it could be all in your head. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like can't take a picture of a ghost. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I can feel if it's around. Yeah. But is it really around? Am, am I crazy? Then you start questioning like yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, it, yeah, that's how I do. I, mean, but I don't know. I don't know. I it was. It's yeah. It's strange down there. It's not that bad though. No, oh, Beer Can Mountain. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta bring those back. Shit. Right. Got the bit. You got the big can on. How much do you usually get for Beer Can Mountain? Yeah, it depends on like. I kind of bring it back quarterly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The once a year, one or four times a year kind of thing. Or it should go every two. Cause and BC's less. weird because you kind of have to organize and count everything, right? It's oh, yeah. fucking annoying. It's a, like, well, yeah. that's it. And yeah. like, right now, it's kind of the biggest load. That <laughs> big loads. Yeah. Oh, shit. But it, I'll have to get my brother's, like, five-ton truck and bring them out. It's, yeah. It's a lot. It's probably, like, 1700 bucks. Shit. That's good though. That's yeah, good. Well, that, like, when you beer count on, does that pay your rent? That buys beer? That like, yeah, yeah, well, that, like pays rent. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and if I can pay rent quarterly with beer that I've bought, and you know what I mean, then that lowers your monthly rent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get four months for free. Yeah, it can work. Yeah, it can work. That's cool. It can work. Oh fuck, <laughs> zinger! <laughs> <laughs> um. No, that's sick. That's super sick. Also, that pun. I hope Dale heard that because he'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's cool though. So you make it work. You're, like you said, the hustle yeah. and the bustle. That's it, man. Yeah, the hustle and the bustle. It's cool though. It's inspiring for like people around you. Like you know, everybody's wants to do it on their own. I know I do. Um, I my thing is I don't want to have to ask for time off work for very much longer. Mm. I want to be able to just be like, yeah, you can. Because I'm you, mm. and it doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> mm. Make a post online. I'm not gone fishing. Yeah, gone fishing. Yeah, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, back in five. Yeah, that kind of thing. I'd love. That's the goal. That's the dream. I'd love for that to happen. Definitely. I don't make care. it happen. Yeah, you make it happen exactly. Right. That's right. Exactly. It's Quantum lot. physics. Quantum physics. I don't know much about it, but I know it's kind of like not mind over matter, but it's thinking about things and making it happen. Yeah, and making it happen exactly. Mm-hmm. And just self belief. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like if I'm trying to sell you something and I don't and believe in the product, yeah. you can feel that. Like mm-hmm. humans are very intuitive. And or is it fake? You know what I mean. You might be very like well knowledge on the product, but are you just spewing bullshit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or you know it's like I mean? you could know it and not believe in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. But I think humans are 
program to actually understand when people are lying. Obviously, some people are good at it and we're not always correct, but there's a feeling you get, like trust that gut instinct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that's, that's what we've done the whole time with yeah. this place is trust our gut. And also when people like, for people starting a business, consumers don't purchase based on your product, they purchase mm. based on why you're creating the product. Mm -hmm. They don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. The fact that you're here because you love watching the community, I guess I can't have words in your mouth, but I assume mm -hmm. you love watching the progression of all the skaters, like helping oh, yeah. people skate I mean, all year round. Like This place is a blessing for all the skaters in Vancouver. And that must bring fulfillment to you. Especially seeing as how there's two spots to skate, or three spots to skate as skate parks, basically, or whatever, mm -hmm. in, in Vancouver, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the winter, especially. Seeing as how winter is raining. And think about how good people have gotten because of skating. Oh, like, you must see it. Dude. Oh, yeah, like lots, lots of progression, for sure. You know, like All my quarter pipe game is because of SBC. Yeah. I used to skate quarter pipe so differently before I, I moved here. Yeah. Night and day, the way I skate. I'd always try to do like technical tricks, just stalling. I'd never grind. I would just try to do like basically skating as if I was skating street, like tricks that'll take me 20 tries to do at once. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm never flowing around. I'm just like trying to do something one time. And then coming here, I've just learned how to like just flow a bit more. A full ramp. Mm -hmm. Change the skating game. It's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just holding up, man. Yeah. Dude, and you said uh, this ramp, it was a different ramp, right? This ramp's been around for a while. Um, the first eight feet was mine in my backyard, which was in North Van. It was in East Van. Like, it moved around. But the spine of the vine, a bunch spine of the vine, spine of the ramp, a bunch of it was from Kevin Harris. Yeah. Ultimate. And he also, we went and tore some old ramps up at his place. And like we built the bathrooms, but we did it to get the skate light because he had this skate light, and that you know what I mean was the main part of the deal. Yeah. And that's sh this shit's fucking bulletproof. Man, this has been around for so long. Like this has been I think like it, this is skate ranch. I, I I'm not. I, I heard it was a skate ranch, skate light, which is fucking old. It's old. And then, and, and then it sat under the snow. Yeah. And dude, uh, now it like even like now it like skating uh, between skating and then shows like spilling alcohol and that kind of stuff. It fucking takes a beating. Look how good a shape it is. Like considering it's like there's there's a couple cracks for it. sure. But I mean like it's not. I'm I'm not Can't, not gonna notice it. If yeah, exactly. Right. And like for however old it is, a couple cracks is pretty much fuck all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's pretty much it's as old. As, you know, it's like 33 years old. Apart. Exactly. That's so fucking sick. Yeah, that's so sick. Or that's how old you are? 33? Yeah. Nice. I'm 30. That's so dope. <laughs> My parking does not let me. I've been the two hour maximum. So I have Was to it go five move. already? No, I have. I've been here for two hours and I'm not allowed to on my phone to update. I have to move because it's two hour maximum. Mm. So unless I have changed, which I don't think I do, I have to move my truck. Oh, shit. What time is it? Five. Yeah, I owe you two bucks. Oh, it's all good, man. That's cool. I'll be back. Yeah, go get him. Ooh, I'm chilly. Yeah, heat's on, bro. Heat's on? Yeah. Yeah. It's a big building. You know, hard to, hard Dude, it's hard to freaking heat this place, man. It's, it's I'm wearing long johns. I'm, I'm good, dude. You're wearing long johns? I'm wearing long johns, yeah. 10 degrees outside. You're ready. Usually October through April, I'm wearing long johns, but this winter, dude, especially, I don't know why, I've been so warm this winter. It's been weird. I've been warmer than I've, I like haven't needed the heat at all. I know why. Why? Because it's warmer out. Because it is warmer. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been way warmer. Definitely because of that. It's, it's like, been it's super like 10 deep, degrees yeah. and sunny today. It's fucked. And yesterday was fucking sunny. I went to Ladner yesterday. It was so fucking good. I love that hole. It was so fun. Ooh, it's such a fun, fun sesh. And uh, Corey and Samji and Theo and just like, oh, just a good, good people. Mm, it's so fun. Good crew. Good crew. And I feed those sessions, man. I love them. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it so much. You ever get cold in here? You, you Me, no. Yeah. I, I run hot. Yeah, you do run hot, eh? I'm a chunky, yeah, monkey, I'm yeah. a chunky monkey, man. I got oh. lots of, oh. you know, I don't think walruses get very cold. <laughs> you know? Yeah, true. I wonder if walruses have sleep apnea. Mm-hmm. Do you have sleep apnea? Oh, fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. We should work so, on that. So what? 
question. What does that mean when you have sleep apnea? Uh, it means you snore like the dickens. So most girls are most. I, I sleep on. I sleep on the couch. Mm, not uh, so much, but but it's, you snore and then you stop breathing, and then you kick in. Yeah, you, you know. What I mean, mm. so it's kind of a. It's not the healthiest. Do you wake up? When you're yeah, like I, I did I had a sleep test and I snored four thousand four hundred and fourteen times, and then woke up, like you're you, you're constantly fatigued because you don't ever have a good rest because you're constantly like you fall asleep and then you snore and then you like you stop breathing you stop breathing and you wake up Shit. and then you go back to sleep and cycle continues and then the cycle continues and then you're never really fully truly got REM mm -hmm. so you're never fully rested mm -hmm. but there's breathe like I'm looking at getting the breathing machine but you know so you have a date over it's just like you can give her the option of you can sleep next to Snorlax the Snorkist truck or Darth Vader S Snorkist <laughs> you know, like or Darth Vader yeah and Darth Vader will be a little he healthier but like you know can't really like give you know give me a little smooch and you take your mask off like, <laughs> breathing on her you know? well maybe if you're having your but like what is love about you know what i mean yeah like, exactly if you well, can't love me with my breathing machine then, then who who the <laughs> fuck yeah are you even in love with me at all i don't know i think you can find a girl that would love you sleep paralysis or sleep, sleep apnea, sleep apnea. apnea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my mom has that oh really i also i sleep does she have a breathing guard. machine i think yeah she does yeah shut up crazy yeah well do you find it helps? I think so. Yeah. As far as I've learned. As far as I've learned. Okay. Yeah. Like, so yeah, what, yeah. what's, like, the machine just, what does it do for you? It just blows air and keeps your throat or your nasal cavities open. So you don't snore and it's just like, so then you're not constantly waking up. So you actually get some so rest. So you actually get rest. So can it cure it or with you didn't use the machine? No. 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 Okay. no so is there a cure or not really? I'm sure there's probably some sort of surgery or something but I don't know if that's a cure is that a beautiful blonde yes oh yes <laughs> <laughs> all good thank you so much how long did it give me two hours wow shit Perfect. yes um what is love I mean what love got to do got to do it do we gotta have like a uh, like? Do you have any nights planned for like uh, like bluesy? Like is Rod uh, spending some? Rod always spins. He does sober January mm -hmm. as well. So he's taking some time off right now. So like I miss my drinking buddy all January. Yeah. Aww. Rod he's, is such a good guy. He's man. the best. He's such a nice guy. Rod father. He's yeah. a he's bike mechanic. So and fucking cool, man. So nice. He but like you know sometimes forget he's like and he's sixty. 64 yeah you know which is almost 70 yeah when you think about it he's my dad's age man you know, and, but like and he parties with us like he'll you know we'll finish here and we'll go to the bar till 3 4 a.m yeah you know and he'll go back to work at 8 you know so he'll get four hours sleep but as a 63 year old that's fucked up you know, he's a machine you know, he's a well-oiled machine liquor machine yeah but he's, he's, the, he's the best spins the best music Great vibes. He's the he's a real person too, man. Like he's so genuine and so real and true and that shit. When you, yeah, I don't know. Single it's old a, man. Single yeah. old man, yeah. Which is perfect for me because then like there's no one nagging him to come home. Yeah, he you can know? he can just. I can have you know I can have my drinking buddy and. Yeah. But January is I'm just like oh. You miss uh, him. Yeah. Where's he? Oh, he's here, but he just he, you know he, he doesn't come around as much because, you know, probably craves the drink. We always drink beer and listen to music and yeah. do all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and when he, if you're here, it might like he might just have a slippery slope into. Yeah, it. yeah, he'll give he gives himself a weak penalty if he has a drink. Oh shit! Yeah, he's pretty hard about it. He's done it for 15 years. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's just keeping himself in check, and mm -hmm. that's just a smart thing to do. That's just sure. yeah, That's fair enough. Yeah, that's cool. Dude, what are we doing after this? We're doing some sort of uh, absolute underground interview. Absolute underground, yeah. That, is that, be, yeah, no, is that, is that yours that you run, or? Yeah, I've done it for two or three years. Yeah, now, it's, every, every two months, but it always creeps up on me because I always forget. You and forget, then, and then you you got to. I'm again. just like, fuck! Yeah. I got to interview somebody. So you did Stepan, I remember. Done Stepan, yeah. done the Baku guys, done PD, done Chai Pig, and Alexis, Rosie, Cotton. Uh, I've been in some of them. I right? did do Cotton. 
Cotton. Yeah, no, I did do Cotton. I haven't seen him in a while. I think I've seen it. I haven't seen Cotton in a while either. Yeah, he hasn't been around. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he's been skating that much. Or maybe he has, but he's just yeah, been night shifting. Yeah. It's Plaza, kind of Plaza night shifting. Probably doing his own thing. I yeah. don't know. We'd have been falling out, but that's yeah. the way friendships go sometimes. Yeah, sometimes that's how yeah. she goes. Wish him all the best, but at the same time, it's just like, fuck you. Yeah. Well, yeah. not really, but you yeah. know what I mean? That, with any, you know, you, it's like that being close. You get so close with some people, and then it's stuff falls apart. Yeah. But that's, I think that's life and friendships. It's like grow, growing pains. Yeah. You know, you got to learn, and then how do you deal with that? Like, I was affected by our falling out more so than he was. Then you think then I think he was yeah it's hard to say yeah I I don't I don't know but I see Mm. interesting well I mean happens yeah you're not the only one that's for sure yeah (laughs) Yeah, that's it's hard though Mm -hmm. but I didn't mean to bring it up I didn't even realize oh yeah no fuck I'm an open book like I said Mm -hmm. yeah well you're not trying to hide it's also like it's good that you had him for crucial moments though like even if it doesn't last forever it was nice oh oh, I mean the sessions like I mean, he like did, the, he, the good times when it was the good times, it was fucking awesome. Yeah, you know the sessions here were unreal. Like I got some of them on video of, like they'll pop up on my computer of like lines because we'd just get drunk and he'd skate here till super late and I'd film them. Yeah, and just some of the lines, I'm just like fuck. Man. There's not really anybody. Well, James Clark destroys and destroys this rap. With as much style, yeah, for sure. Cotton like, Cotton's up there. Cotton was up there. Cotton's, Cotton's oh, up there. oh yeah, no, for 100%. sure. He was, but he also need. Uh, he kind of had to be the amount of time he put in here. Like yeah, you know. But yeah, he was. He was good up and around. He helped me out a lot. Yeah, for sure. And I miss the guy. Yeah, but that's. Yeah, that's what happens, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's okay. It feels like breakups. Oh yeah, they're even worse. Like breakups. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, like friendship breakups, it's, they can be easy or not. Like I can usually, I don't, I, I can wash my hands of most things. Yeah, mm. and like it's more. I don't know if it's a Taurus thing or I just build a wall. I can just kind of cut things off and be like, all right, that's done. You're like, okay, that's done. yeah. Well, what's yeah. there is there. Yeah, I'm, 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 easy, I'm easy to let things. I'm go. good at that when relationship wise. When, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's <laughs> been good in moments. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. 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 Like yeah. the lingering is not healthy either. I've mm-hmm. done that as well. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm yeah, human, yeah. you know. Yeah. But a lot of times I'm like pretty aware of the relationships that I'm in, and sometimes I recognize that it's not meant to be forever. But mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that I don't enjoy the time I spend with that person now. Mm-hmm. But when it ends, it's like it's hard to fight. Like, am I afraid of? Am I afraid of this not being forever, or am I afraid of change? Because mm-hmm. if I'm simply just afraid of change, and that's just something I need to get over, because mm-hmm. it always ends up like, yeah, ends up better. When you just you learn it from every single person that comes oh, yeah. into your yeah. life for yeah, so a reason, yeah, for you know? sure. Well, the learning is the best part. Like, yeah. And then looking back at it, being like reflecting, yeah, huge. Know, and then you can being yeah. able to mo- and then move it moving forward. Yeah. Something I recently heard that was like really uplifting. It was it's really difficult to cheer for someone that's left your life, whether that is a friend or an ex, like a lover. But if you can just flip those feelings of anger. Or not maybe not anger, just the being upset, for example, whatever the negative feeling is associated to that person, everyone's is going to be different. Mm-hmm. If you can just not let them know, but deep down, like cheer for them to get little victories. If you do it enough, you're, you're going to start get, wanting them to do better. You're going to get over and whether or not they ever find out, which they don't need to, they it just makes you. your less... feeling change from negative to a positive when you associate with that person and like mm-hmm. recognize that they were there for that. It's hard to do, but it, it does change the way you look at them, and it does change your mood. Because, mm-hmm. like, if you think about it, and say you had a falling out or whatever it is, and you're always thinking negatively, like it's you're, it's going to change something in yourself as well. Yeah, oh, for sure. And going forward, yeah. walking something. past them might ruin your day. Yeah, or like um, a memory could ruin your a memory of them could ruin your day, right? A song or whatever. But but I mean, but that being said, it. Like that person was in your life for a while or whatever, and you did have good times, and it's important to remember that those good times happen too. Like just because you had a falling out doesn't mean that those good times didn't happen, and you can't appreciate like what that person did for you or the time spent with them or whatever, because that's just life. Like, you know, 
it is what it is. Much easier from the outside perspective. For Talk sure. No, no, words, it is, but it's but real advice, though. For, for sure. And, dude, like, but, like, if you can learn to let go and, as you say, like, um, cheer for them, um, like, like, then you probably have someone cheering for you. You know what I mean? You, you probably do. Like, maybe not, but, like, you probably do. Like, if you, if you can let it go... Like, why wouldn't they be able to, like... It's, you can't go. control what they're going to do. True. And that's the thing with life in general. You you can't control what situations happen. Good things happen to good and bad people. Yeah. So, therefore, are those things good or bad, or are they just things that happen to everyone? It's the way you react to it. Yeah. It's not your... You, you yeah. can't control what someone else is going to do. And yeah. You can't control what someone else is going to think or exactly. say. But you can control how you react to every situation that you're dealt with. Yeah. And if you can just flip it in your head and start cheering for them... And it doesn't have to be just strictly relationships are falling out. It could be like competitors in business. It can be Businesses, anything. Businesses, mm. competitors like, in sport, whatever it is. Yeah, that's true. I just think for me, when I'm in a positive state of mind and I can take inspiration from things and translate them to skating that have nothing to do with skating originally. Yeah. And maybe it could be a business thing. Maybe you could learn something from cheering for them. Like say you're watching that ex become successful at what the next – Endeavor she has. Yeah. Maybe you can take some of. Yeah, I was going for my personal one. Okay. Not. All my exes are she's. That's yeah. why I said it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He or she, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so I got sidetracked now. I'm trying to think. I forgot it. <laughs> Shit, I'm so sorry, dude. That's okay. <laughs> um, oh, like say that they are on a new endeavor. Maybe they do something right. And instead of being resentful for the fact that they have success and not wanting to see, like, oh, or like belittling it in some way, saying like, oh, of course they got that, they had an in over here, or trying to make an excuse for their mm-hmm. success. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could recognize something you could do in your life. You know? Yeah, that's true. I agree. That's Help cool. it inspire you. Yeah. Or even just, yeah, like right. you said, cheerleader. I get but more inspired you, when I'm happy. Yeah, me too. Say, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I try not to be around people if I'm if I'm in a in a slump or whatever, which happens. Usually, the rain makes me happy because it's people are around. It's yeah. not even more about business, but this business is kind of run in the rain. Yeah. You know, true. it's not fair weather friends or anything, but it's sort of fair weather friends in the sense where everyone's outside during the summer times and everyone, there's a lot of stoke in here in the winter. There's a lot of stoke. There's a good vibe in here always. Every time I come in here, it's good people and get, and like people that are always like cheering for people. Like, you know, like that's the best part. That's the best part. This is, a, this is a lack of ego. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You can have a little gutsy, or and some sometimes the chicks fucking run the ramp for so sure. Like seven, dude. seven. There, there's way more prevalent. Yeah, women, ladies, broad, oh, broads. <laughs> <laughs> Started going the right way and you went right back. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches, humans. Yeah, like, but, and then you know, and then there's the, such different levels of skating between everybody, but there's still the cheering. Because you can watch that person progress, and yeah. like you're, you're having, even if you've seen them before or not, you can see that they're just trying to get a kick turn, or they're just trying to they're just, slash the. Coping. They're just trying to make their way up or make their way back mm-hmm. down, right? And like, yeah. you know, everyone, even just a little tap on the ramp, as like a clap, mm-hmm. is can go a long way for sure. You know, even just a little bit of stoke too, because it's, it's an intimidating sport or thing. It is intimidating. Activity. Activity. It is intimidating. You know, man. Well, especially not, not so much anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's you open know up what I mean? Sure. Now it's kind of it's it's very all inclusive. It's all inclusive, but it's normalized yeah. in a sense. Like, yeah, you know, in schools, I wouldn't be surprised if they had a skating, skating program. skating program or yeah, something. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's that's pretty prevalent in Europe and Sweden and all this. Yeah. And I just feel like a lot of people have put a lot of time into creating communities and groups that are welcoming because they had a hard time getting into skating. Because yeah. it could, like, when we started too, it was... Oh, man, remember, like, the, what was that? What was, uh... What's that bully's name? No, no, it wasn't bully's. <laughs> it was a gang in, in Sure Park. It was, like, skate gang, uh, snake something, or no. What was Jess Atmore and... Oh, snake lords. Jan and... I don't know the name of it. You remember that, though, right? I didn't know Cobras. that. Cobras. <laughs> The fucking cobras, yeah. 
It wasn't like they were like they weren't like they're just older and like you know what I mean. They were real like dudes, but they were like rough. Like they were like they weren't gonna like just. Oh, they weren't gonna help you. Yeah, they weren't gonna help you out. You know what I mean? Well, maybe they would have. Who knows? But it looked very intimidating. Yeah, they're awesome. Well, you're, and like as at now, it's like they're fucking like just regular people, dude. You know, you're just you grow you're, up skating. And you're, you're a kid looking yeah. up to. An you're adult a kid looking up to. Yeah, exactly. To, like, right. Yeah. And the style is so yeah, much different than what you style. see as your friends in school and stuff. Like. Yeah. Well, they're rough around the edges as humans. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, skating, to me, was like a cutting... Not cutting edge, but it was, because it was just like... They didn't give a fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when I was looking up to skaters as a kid, it was my step-cousin, Ryan Boss. I I haven't said that name in a long time. But, you know, I was fucking, like, seven, eight years old, and they were skating in the basketball courts and, like, lighting things on fire and trying to ollie over it and I just thought it was the fucking coolest thing yeah you know what I mean how to ghetto blaster like yeah they're just fucking hanging out skating around not doing smoking get, cigarettes yeah they're just you cool you know what yeah. I mean like they were kinda to me that was just like looking up being like oh this guy's a fucking badass yeah but, these guys are bad the fuck <laughs> ass man these guys like, are awesome shit on fire and smoking cigarettes like, I wanna go hang out in the basketball courts Jack said something recently that it makes so much sense and I never thought about it we were talking about I forget who we were talking to. We were at your house. It was New Year's Eve. We were talking about how many good skaters came from Shore Park. This little mm-hmm. suburb out of Edmonton just had, like, generations of good skaters mm-hmm. come out of there. Oh, yeah. And then we were thinking about, it, like, well, well, there's so many, like, Ontario boys, Alberta boys that kill it. And Jack was like, dude, everyone in Alberta is gnarly, and they're bored. Of course mm-hmm. they're good at skating. Mm-hmm. It's like, fuck, that makes so much sense. Like, the lifestyle, when you grow up in the country, like, it's a tougher type of human than like mm, a lot of city kids. Yeah, oh yeah, fucking farmers, but man. bored farmers that find a skateboard, like, of course they're jumping down handrails. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, of course those dudes are becoming like really, really talented. Mm-hmm. That's true. Kyle Rice, that was the gnarliest human being I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Marin, all those kids out there, like, yeah, they're farm kids. Yeah, they're just girls from Calgary, we're from Edmonton. Outside Edmonton. Oh. Yeah, we're from like a suburb of Edmonton, though, and like. Even he's further from like a suburb of a suburb of Edmonton, like mm. or draw some townies. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Told you a lot. My address is Shore Park. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is. Yeah. Mm. I told you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he has told me quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I'm past our draw some, but mm-hmm. Shore Park encompasses like a big area out there. It's I'm not in county. the city. I'm not in the city itself. So. Boobs are sweating. Are you? I gotta pee. My dick's about to sweat. Mm. Into the toilet. You ever been to Black and Blue? No. Steak. Steakhouse. Like, oh, I thought you were just saying that black and blue is the way you like it. Like charred on the outside and blue on the inside. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's also a restaurant. Oh, I have. It's fucking good. I've been doing too much Korean food. Mm, they got a good French onion soup. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Where's that? Mm, like Alberni in Georgia. It's, it's kind of swanky, but they got like Wagyu and like some fucking tomahawk. It's like a $170 Ooh. steak, but it's... The tomahawk's delicious. It's a fucking gnarly. I want to go there either dressed as my hot dog suit or Barney oh, yeah. or Barney Rubble, in like a Barney or Fred Flintstone outfit, and get the tomahawk. Yeah, I'm okay. just. I, I, it seems kind of ignorant, but at the same time, it's just like, well, fuck, man. There's no dress code. And Where like, is I want to dress like fucking Fred Flintstone and eat a big fucking steak. Then and why the fuck wouldn't I? Why the fuck wouldn't yeah, I? That's a good call. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, that makes me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I like to dress up. You yeah. should be allowed to spend... Like, you spend 170 on a steak. On a steak. Where is the you steak? You can wear whatever the fuck you want on it. I think so. Like, let the man enjoy his steak to the best of his capabilities. He's coming back. <laughs> yeah. It's it's true. Coming. Steakhouse, uh, kind of Georgia or Alberni or something. It's good? Correct. It's fucking delicious. They might love it. They might take a picture of you and fucking Use advertise it. it as a, like, fucking tomahawk. Get some clicks. There you go. Oh, oh. I was going to say when I took Spice. a piss earlier, I saw the sign for Saturday. Fashionism. Mm, fashionism. Yeah, that's really sick because my last guest that I had on while well, he was gone, my friend, I met him in World Cup in, in France in 2013. And I haven't seen him since, but he is in a band from Finland. Mm. And he's like a top ranked foosball player in Finland and his girlfriend is the lead girl in fashionism and now he's living with her like right by 12 Kings. So lead I mean, girl in fashion, is there a ch- oh yeah, is there a chick in the band? There probably is, you're probably right. Yeah, 
I, maybe I made up the lead. Maybe I made up the lead. I saw photos and it looked like she was mm, featured the head in one. the photo. Yeah. She, it's 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 like a, like a moddy. Does that make sense to you? Like sort of moddy punk rock. Like I feel like they would drive mopeds. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's a Canadian tuxedo riding mopeds eating vegan food. Really? Prob- and they're yeah, like a punk band. Yeah. yeah. So it's R 2s girlfriend. Sick. We, I did on our. I posted her band on the blog too. Oh. He brought up. That's how they met. She was touring in Europe and met him in Finland, and he opened up for her in Finland. Oh. Cute. Well, adorable. Yeah. I gotta go tour. And I gotta go <laughs> fucking tour. Man. I fucking karaoke tour. <laughs> oh, I, should, I was gonna say I just got a good idea, but like, I kind of want to tell you when you know his ideas because yeah, he's not yeah. his guy. You know what I mean? He can't be spewing other people's ideas. Yeah, on, true. All over the internet. Who's gonna listen to this? I don't know. Yeah. How many how many followers you guys got? You get about hundred listens an episode. Hundred listens. Pretty good. That's not bad. More than I expected to listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just it's a about start. It. I mean, fuck. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And some episodes. And can you tell if people listen to part of it or all of it, or is that just like, downloads? Oh, just that's people da- downloading. Yeah. The we don't. We aren't on YouTube yet, so I just have the downloads. Like you put it on like your iPhone or take it from Spotify. Or mm-hmm. Apparently, if we're on YouTube, we can get a lot more views. Oh yeah, YouTube's where it's at. Really. Follow you guys on Spotify, and I listened to uh, like a whole bunch of them in Mexico. Nice. It was, <laughs> we, we got robbed the first night, so it was kind of like, and we were there with just a big group of people, so it was, it was fun in one sense, but also I was just like, I want to relax, I don't, and I want to listen to these things and just lie around. And I actually spent like two days lying in bed. Sick. Which one did you like the most? Mmm, Prius was rad. I really like Benny. Benny, I love I love Benny, and he's just so informative. He's super informative, yeah. and but he's just he's such a nice dude. Such an awesome guy. Um, I met him randomly. He lost his. He got his bike <clears throat> stolen, like a Skull Skates cruiser, and we have a, usually have access to bikes down here because this it's is where they come to where go, they come. So. And I got it back for him, and then ended up getting an interview in King Shit. He was the editor at that point, That's so that was kind of our oh, first interaction. And cool. Yeah, Benny's he's helped me out. I was telling Malcolm yeah. before you got here. Well, you guys talked about it on that one. He was just yeah. like, and yeah, going through the same. But check. even after that point, I've reached out to him for so many things and like it's just advice and yeah, like for example, now that we've announced the World Cup team, the next step is fundraising. We have from now until July to raise as much money for sponsorship. Like I was telling you, even today. I went to Dish and Doer because we what we talked about it as a group, the pants that I love. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we just want black pants and then the Canadian jersey. And so before we used to have Adidas with like the little Canada football logo and like the three stripes. Mm. But we saw photos. We were just brainstorming ideas about their Team Canada jerseys. We did curling, we did rugby, everything we could think of. The bobsled team. We found like a really nice jersey we like. And they just have, uh, the girls had leggings on, but. You could just get black. Black pants. Yeah, it's not, it's not denim. They're very similar to jeans. It's kind of like those. But those they said they, you said they got. I, mean, I think these are. Yeah, on the inside they have like oh, from yeah. the knee up to the crotch. It like opens up and they call it a gusset, and that's spandex. So when you're biking and skating, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not laughing. You're sick. Where'd you say those are from? Uh, Dewar. It's like Abbott and Hastings. Oh yeah. Just yeah. Bring around just on the corner there. Yeah, they're great. They're a Vancouver-based company. They were on Kickstarter. I loved their pants for a long time. Mm. Sam G used to be sponsored by them because one Edmonton friend mm-hmm. was working for them, and they just like he posted some Instagram clips of him skating. And they gave him free pants, and he loved them. Mm. Dude, they're great. They're like the best pants I've ever skated in, and like, biked in. Lots of room for activities. Yeah, lots of room. I used lots to of stretch. I've ripped many pants skating. Like when you're sweaty and they stick to your legs. Oh yeah, and the crotch is just chafe. Chafe. Yeah, you these. Know. I was not convinced, and then the girl, she was like, if you ever rip these pants, and not tear them by like walking, but if you rip them like skating or stretching, like you, I'll give you a free pair of pants, like for life, this is not like, you will not rip these. And then I got home, still skeptical, and I sat on my bike and I just pedaled, and I was like, I knew immediately. It, it feels like yoga pants, mm-hmm. like the, <laughs> the spandex in the middle. Are they expensive, know. or is it? 100 bucks. 100 bucks a pair? Yeah, so, yes. But they last long? Yeah, I pretty much go through one a year. I just wear them every day. Yeah. yeah. You only have like seven shirts though. I've got way more shirts than pants, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. I uh 
He only said that in another podcast. You're yeah. like, I have six shirts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All white, all black. <laughs> Pretty much. I have more jackets than I do anything else. And that's not even a choice. I just what, si- what size are you? Small. Really? I don't know how many small shirts I have, but we'll sponsor you. I'll give you guys <laughs> I'm a presents. Medium. So you guys get yeah. presents? I got presents for you guys. Aww. One's a weed gummy. Oh my god. Ooh. Yay. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, uh, or weed gummies. Um, you have... You have, like, a decent closet, but it's all the same shit. Yeah. It's all the same, like, it's literally, like, white shirt. Like, a white shirt. Like I just have white shirts, shirts. Plain. shirts. Yeah. yeah. Pretty plain. All plain. Like, that's the most... Oh, that sweaters. That kind thing yeah. is, like, the most decorative nice. awesome. he's gonna get. Yeah. I was reading it, I was like, oh, that's that's nice. a, That is as decorative as Cam will get. Yeah, and this was... We t- I talked about it before. There's a girl on YouTube that just posts videos every Thursday. Thoraya something. And it's just, like, those... Ridiculous interaction videos where she goes on like college campuses and asks a question, mm. but then she finally blew up She asked people like hey, who's your crush? Are you willing to call them right now mm. and ask them on a date? And she just films them on speakerphone calling their crush and asking them out and I was like, stoked that her views finally like blew up like that mm. video clicked and all of a sudden overnight She's getting she went from a thousand da- or thousand views to a hundred thousand views oh, wow. and she also sells the be kind sweaters and then That's she followed rich. Vancouver or, uh, Voices of Vancouver podcast. She followed me, and we just messaged a little bit. And she's like, she was stoked on the podcast, and I was stoked on her videos. Nice. So I bought it. I just wanted to support. Yeah. I like supporting people that I like. You know, like yeah, I really love it. Yeah, so yeah, this is yes, this is probably the most you're gonna get for graphic wise. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but it's cool. It's a roll. You can take it or leave it. You can have a shirt or you have a weed gummy or you can say no because you guys are your own humans. Oh, I'll take, I'll take both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll do both. <laughs> Around. I, I like to have it all. What time you got to get going, man? Me? Well, we, we got to do you and then I got to go fuck my brother's getting back from Mexico and then we're going to go for steak. Is that what you're going to say? I think so. Steak. You going to the fried fun song tonight? Uh, I'm not gonna. That well, takes I'm, prep. I'm not gonna. F- no, I got my hot dog soup, but then you know, I gotta go clean up a bunch of shit. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Literally some shit. Yeah. Some cat poop. Some cat poop. Which is fine. Cat poop. And my brother gets back from Mexico. You'll eat the cat poop. I will not eat the cat poop. I will not. <laughs> I'm gonna clean up and then. I also I need to deliver a gift to one of my favorite bars. They got a bunch of VHS. It's Hail Marys. But, uh, oh, at uh, Broadway or Fraser. Yeah, right, Fraser Pit, yeah. I brought her one of those vintage uh, rewinders, so they don't have to like wait till the movie ends. Mm. The car ones, like the Corvette, where you put it in and close <laughs> it. Just Just one button, rides yeah. it. Got it. But I bought her one of those, so I was gonna deliver that That's to her. Cool. That's nice. That's so. Yeah, nice. we can wrap this up. Oh yeah, fuck this yeah! Is I, I, that was, this is a wonderful interview. Thank you so much. It's good. That was fucking fun. That was fun. Edit out. Edit out Jordan's pissing. I think we definitely heard that one this time. You heard that right. one? Oh yeah. Rod's done that too in an interview before. He's just pissed and yeah. He's saying okay. Rosie's interview. Skate Rosie's oh interview. really? Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well. I'd like to have Rosie on here too. Yeah, Rosie's dope. Rosie. There's a few people I'd like to have. Yeah. There's Rosie's, a list. Rosie's sick. Yeah. I liked your interview with her. Oh Rod. Yeah, she's she's awesome. She's so fun, man. She's so cool. Yeah. Oh, that girl, yeah. Corey too. I love Corey so much, man. Yeah. Right? He's, he's, he's so from cool. back home. He's from like Niagara Falls area. Nice dude. So you knew him before? Nope. No. No. But just from the same hood. Yeah, that's cool. I think I'm Cotton knew him. Cotton, because Cotton was Hamilton, but so they'd skate that kind of that circuit. Yeah. Hamilton's Niagara, Toronto. Corey has cool. been so good at skating for so long. It's pretty old too, man. Like you know. For ki- and like not just for like, kill yeah we're still dude, making parts he's still killing yeah, yeah. Like not and like, like and at the level like at that level mm-hmm. like you're like oh shit that's crazy. he's another tiny little agile dude Wilson mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I love watching I've said it before here I love watching street skaters skate tranny mm. like I know Corey's great at tranny but I consider him street skater first and you see it and goes her back that's okay yeah. um, but watching him just. Him, Magnus, Reed, oh, yeah, Magnus. like watching people skate quarter pipes as if they're ledges or as if they're a rail. Like there's something different about the style of the street skater in here. Yeah, especially in here. Yeah, it's great. People can do flip tricks in here, and you're like, what? I'm like what? It's Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Anything you'd like to say that we, we haven't got out? Mm-hmm. 
I love you. I love you. <laughs> um, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Skull Skates. Yeah. Big shout out to always to Jeff Cole. Yeah, Jeff Cole know, rules, man. PD, Sam, anybody that's ever, you know, helped us, anybody that, anybody that supports us, wears our gear, mm -hmm. bands that play here, mm -hmm. people that come to shows. People that come here just yeah, to skate. Just to skate, just to hang out, mm -hmm. you know. Couldn't do it without you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Appreciate mm -hmm. you. Yeah, fucking hey. Fuck yeah. Well, thanks for... Thanks for fucking coming on. Man. We're stoked on having you on. Yeah, yeah. Man. Eating jerky and smoking weed with us. And Thanks to Into the Wild. Yeah, Into the Wild. Beef Our jerky. Premium handcrafted beef jerky. It all started with three friends. I won't read the back. I'll it all started with three friends. When you buy it. But their story is written on the bag. Mm. Well, have a good, uh, have a good afternoon, guys. <laughs>